What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to paint a snow hill in Photoshop. So right now I'm in the Photoshop startup screen and what I'm going to do first, I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to hit non, I'm going to hit a 9 by 12 landscape orientation, 600 dots per inch and hit create. So I'm going to start off with a blank canvas. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sky and it's going to be sort of a muted sky because it's, a, it's sort of going to be a snowy background. So I'm going to try to give today's tutorial that kind of vibe. So I'm going to add that kind of background by using my paint bucket tool right here. Keeping in mind that it's also the gradient tool. just And it's underneath the eraser tool. So just keep that in mind in case you see there's the paint bucket tool. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color for the snow. And the snow is a, sort of a white color. So I'm not going to make it entirely white. I'm just going to give it sort of like a blue color. So I'm going to go up to a blue and choose that and a blue green too. So we can use a color like this for the base color of the sky. So I'm going to hit the paintbrush tool and it's also the pencil tool to so keep that in mind. I'm going to hit my hard round tool and I'm, just going to, I'm going to create like sort of the baseline of the entire drawing. What that means is sort of the horizon line that the hill is going to rest on. You know when you're drawing a landscape there's a horizon line. That's what I'm going to draw right now, but it's not going to exactly be a straight line, but it's still going to be horizon line. I didn't want to do that. But there's also some little gaps which you might want to get rid of, so that's a disadvantage of using the paint bucket tool. Okay, and now we're going to make a new layer. We're going to still use this hard, uh, this hard brush, and we're going to make the smoothing 100. This may cause your brush to kind of lag. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make your brush go slow, and it's going to be hard for the brush to keep up with what you're doing. So just keep that in mind if your smoothing is up, but that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a hill shape. We're going to come up and come back down and sort of a slope. Now for now we're going to get rid of this horizontal uh, line layer and we're going to make this hill shape. And then I'm going to use the magic wand tool and select everything so it we don't have to worry about all the gaps that we uh, had to deal with earlier. And then keep in mind, if you're trying to, um, if you're trying to select the in inner parts of this hill, you can also hit the shift key and select that. That way you can select everything. And that way you can draw inside the area or paint bucket it, but you'll still have to deal with the gaps. Okay, and then hit Command D to deselect. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a clipping mask for this hill shape. Now to create a clipping mask, you're gonna wanna make a new layer, hold down the Alt key, and this little icon is gonna pop up here. So hit that button. There's gonna be an arrow pointing down to that layer with the hill shape on it. It's gonna give you a chance to draw in, inside that area without having to go outside the lines, which is super awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the darker color for this uh, to add some shading. I'm going to pick a really dark color actually. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the texture kind of brush. I'm going to use the ultimate pencil hard. You can, use, you can use either this one or the ultimate pastel palooza. I have a feeling at some point I'm going to either switch between the two or this one right here, the drawing box, happy HB. So I'm going to switch between one of the three just to add texture to this, uh, to this, uh, to the hill shape. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a clipping mask to this other one here. So we're going to hit, hold down the alt key and wait for this icon to pop up. Hit that button. So we're going to add a little bit of shading to that. And I'm going to, I want to try to make the shading a little bit more saturated. And so what I'm going to do, and I'm going to switch to this brush, the Ultimate Pastel Palooza. Okay, and then you can also change the color of the shading if you don't like it by hitting, uh, you can go up to Image and Adjustments and hitting Hue Saturation. 
or you can also hit Command U and you can change the brightness, saturation, and the overall color of this entire layer, the shading layer here. So let's see, you can make that a little bit brighter. You can saturate a little bit more so it's more bluer. And to help it blend into that actual white background, you can go up here where it says opacity. And that just changes the transparency of that layer. So that way you don't have to make it entirely uh, blue. You can make it lighter and help it blend into that uh, into that original uh, light blue color. And we're going to leave it like this for now. And, and we're going to do the same thing to this hill. So that's what we're going to draw on here first. I didn't know where to stop. So we're going to get rid of this one for now. And we can make that layer a little bit lighter by hitting this, uh, I mean, not lighter, but we can make it bigger. So what we can do is we can hit this little icon here, the move tool. We can make that bigger. And if you want to freelance it, you can hold down the shift key and move it however you want. You can move it like this so it's in the middle. And, hit, and remember to hit the check mark up here so they know you want it there. And then if you hit this layer, hit Command U. You can change the saturation of that uh, layer. Make it lighter. And then to help it blend in, you can reduce the opacity of it. And then you can have the same shading to the bottom, but we'll still have to deal with the. Uh, this being a different color but to accommodate for that hit the eyedropper tool hit the area with the shading that you want or the color that you want actually just color around that okay now that now that's all said and done the shading is all done now we're gonna make another clipping mask layer and we're gonna choose a color that's a whole lot darker than this original uh, light blue color so we're gonna eyedrop tool that one here and we're going to scroll down until we see a really darker color. Like, say, this muted blue color. It looks good. So it's one of the three pencils that I like to use. I'm going to zoom in here. Get rid of that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sort of a... That's the wrong, that's the wrong brush. gonna make sort of a, a squiggly line about squiggly line right about here and I'm gonna make another one right below it and if you want I'm gonna make that I'm gonna make this pen a little bit bigger And then we can also change the color of that. I want to change that to make it a little bit more saturated. And then we can also still enlarge it. And then once we do that, we can duplicate this layer, this layer with the lines on it. We're gonna right click and hit duplicate layer. And then when we, when we do this layer, we're going to hit the uh, move tool up here. I'm going to move that down a bit. Let me zoom in so I can get it. And then if you want to save you the trouble of moving the wrong layer, hit this lock tool on the one on the original layer. And then you can move this one however you want without having the grab the right layer you know if that makes sense so what I'm gonna do now hit the opacity tool right here and we're gonna reduce the opacity of this layer 
yeah to save us the trouble of adding shading along these lines and trying to get that all lined up and everything but if you want to add even more shading you can hit your eyedropper tool and hit this color here because this layer that we made a duplicate of it's still that same color it's just the opacity has been uh, reduced so we can add that same color without having to hit the eyedropper tool on this specific color which we don't know it's just this original color but it's transparent so it kind of blends into this white so it's basically two colors mixed into each other but we don't know what it is so again you can enhance the shading a little bit just by doing just that and there may be some gaps that you might want to fix like if I zoom in here there may be like a white gap right here that you might want to fix but there might but the majority of these lines that we drew may not have them so you don't, may not have to worry about those and then if you put this uh, original horizon line layer back on here it looks like an original snow hill but what I want to do is I want to fix the shading a little bit and then just to help get that snowy vibe into this uh, drawing I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna make sure the color is white and then I'm gonna hit the paintbrush tool and kind of get a scatter brush in place a brush that can kind of scatter scatter stuff everywhere so I got a Kyle spatter brushes I said scatter didn't I it's spatter or splatter either one so I'm gonna use one of those brushes I'm gonna enlarge it it's two And then there. Now we got sort of a snowy hill vibe going on here. And then I don't want to reduce the opacity of that. But what I can do is I'm going to move it all the way down in front of this layer here. So that way we can see the entire snow hill without any other white spots covering up the uh, shading or the, uh, the line work that we did right here. So yeah, that's how you draw a snow hill. If you did like this video, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you guys in my next video.